If you are 35 or older, you've probably heard the dog ate my homework. This is an excuse that was told jokingly way back in the day, showing how students can always come up with these creative ways to explain why they're not prepared and, and don't have their work for class. But if you teach online, you have heard things way more creative than that. For example, let's try this one. I typed my paper on my laptop, which I left in Florida at my grandparents' house. And that's 13 hours away, so I'm trying to communicate with them about getting the paper to me. Or, I know, I'll just upload a paper for another course to this course, and by the time she emails me, I will have my paper done for her course. Well, that's not really an excuse. That's more of a scheme. But these are the things that we go through when we teach online. And in this tale, I'm going to share with you a student who was on excuse overload and how you can deal with students who always have excuses. Now, before I get started with that, I want you to know that I am the creator of the FACE method. And in that mini course, I teach you how to facilitate, assess, communicate, and empower. I found over the past 17 years that students have different needs because when you teach online, you may teach students from ages 17 to 65, and you have to know how to communicate with them. You have to know how to empower them. You have to know how to make learning easier. That's what facilitation means. And you have to learn how to assess them so that you can instruct and support them uh, even better. And I teach you that in just five little lessons. So I encourage you to go over to kellyaustin.com. You're going to get priceless training in that mini course, things that I wish someone had told me when I started teaching online. All right, so now let's get into our case study. Uh, this is Amber. Let me introduce you. And Amber is a newlywed. She is in her early 20s. This is her first degree. She has no children, and yes, she has had bad experiences in school. How do I know all of this? Because I do something called discovery sessions with my students. They are optional appointments that they set with me where we can get to know each other before we dive into the course. And so during the discovery session, I was able to learn all of this about her, um, but I learned more about the bad experiences in school um, as a result of some of her entries on her class blog. All right, so there were six different situations that came to mind when I was creating this presentation for you. Um, and I'm going to share them with you quickly because I want to get to how you deal with students who have excuses. The first thing was the first assignment, okay? Um, this assignment, Amber submitted it probably two weeks before it was due. I thought that was you know, phenomenal. So whenever students submit an assignment early, I click on it to, you know, look over and examine it in case there's something that they can fix before I grade it that I might notice. So I noticed that from the very beginning, the very first sentence, the first paragraph, there were so many grammatical errors. It was like the rough draft of the rough draft. And I was thinking, hmm, then I noticed the component of the assignment was not just not there. Also, she did not um, implement the APA style. So I sent her an email commending her on submitting her assignment early and staying ahead of the syllabus. And then I shared with her the things that she needed to fix. I said, I asked her, did she watch the um, instructional video and, you know, go over the the uh, rubric because that would help her to make sure she had all of the components that were necessary for the assignment. And she told me her excuse, I don't have time for that. I don't have time to watch the videos that you have for the assignments. I don't have time to print that rubric and, and examine my paper. I just, I don't have time. I said, well, if you change your mind, you may certainly submit, resubmit the assignment as long as you do it before the due date or by the due date. Her blog, um, in the, on the blog, she was uh, supposed to, it was a, I call it a class participation blog. So we have our live sessions from 6 to 8.45. And then the students uh, share a personal or professional and, or personal and or professional connection that they have to the content that we were discussing in class. Um, and so this blog would again have lots of grammatical errors. She did not dig deep 
you know, and showcase her higher order thinking skills. So I would give her feedback about that. And there would always be a reason why, you know, I just like to get straight to the point. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't like to use a lot of words. I just, you know, want to get out what I have to say. And that's just how I am. That's just how I write. Okay. When it came to the test, it was the same thing. We, her test, the test in my class had short answers and essays. And so she would email me and say, it just seems like I can't please you. You know, no matter what I say, it's not good enough. I, you know, I told you I like to get straight to the point. I'm like, well, remember that I'm assessing your learning. So it's okay to be concise, but you also need to be thorough. All right. Then there was extra credit. I mean, we would go back and forth explaining that and how that would supplement her grade. Um, you know, I give my students opportunities to earn extra credit. That's not an extra assignment for me to grade, but it may be something like they attend a webinar that's held by the School of Education and they write up some information about uh, the webinar and I read over it or just just uh, various different things. But she would always email me and say, I don't think the extra credit is helping me. It doesn't look like my 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 grade was enhanced by that. And I would have to go through explaining to her something that was readily seen in that grade book. Um, about it. Then there was the attendance. You know, she uh, would say, my, my family's here from out of town. I need to miss class. I'm like, that's absolutely fine. That's why I offer you all extra credit. So if something happens like that, if you can't come to class because this is a synchronous class, then those points will supplement you know, your grade. And she was like, oh, oh okay, well, uh, uh, well, I'm not going to be able to come this time because my husband and I are sharing computers and I can't, you know, um, get to class. I was like, well, you can access the course via your phone. Um, are you able to do that? Oh, okay, then. Um, and there was just, there would just be this constant, you know, back and forth all the time through email about every single aspect of the course. All right. So I nipped the attendance excuse in the bud because I told her she could talk on the phone. She could access the, you know, the uh, Blackboard Collaborate on her phone, which she was able to do. So she signed, she, she came to class that, that time. Um, lastly, there was the pass or fail. I was always, you know, getting these excuses about, um, you know, I can't do this work. You know, I, I don't even know why I, it's making me feel like I shouldn't have even come to college uh, because I can't do this work and I don't think I'm going to pass the course. I'm going to pass the course and I would have to say, you have this many points. You know, this is what's going on with your grade. Look at the scale. You have a C or you have a B or you have, you know, I would be explaining to her constantly what her grade was, but she always had excuses as to why she could not do her best. So I want to talk to you um, about some takeaways that, let me um, move this down a little bit, some takeaways that we can get from this because excuses and some of those things were just um, some self-esteem issues. So you can kind of say that I'm giving you this, um, something I talk about in the face method course, I'm giving you some of these tips of where you have to be counselor sometimes, uh, you have to be psychologist sometimes, or, you know, or play that role of being able to understand what's really going on with your students um, be behind the excuse. And so I'm going to share with you some strategies that helped me to deal with Amber and then tell you what the happy ending was. So the first thing that you want to do in your syllabus and on your course shell, um, some students that come into the day, they feel very fearful or apprehensive, especially if they've never taken courses online, especially if they're a first generation student um, and they are, they're coming to college for the first time and it's online and they may not be technologically savvy especially again if you know that they've had some bad experiences in their schooling um, and even if you don't know that but when you have those policies and procedures and they're explicit in your syllabus it it kind of relieves them and when they do ask questions you can always have back to those when it came to excuses my syllabus has grown from maybe let's say it was Let's say it was 10 pages when I first started teaching and it's about for cover all of the possible things could be brought your way through excuse them um, via your. OK, um, have an online appointment scheduler so that your students can set up appointment. Those students 
who want to talk to you, who need to feel secure, who need to discuss certain things. Um, Amber set up several appointments with me throughout the year, throughout the, the semester, not just the discovery session at the beginning, but she also set up a couple of other appointments because when she would do bad on those tests, she would want to talk to me about them. And we would talk about her responses and how she could approve it up an appointment with me. So make that a part of um, your offering as well. Um, most universities, you have to have office hours. Having that online appointment schedule is easy for students to get in contact with you. Also, I want to encourage you to have recipe type instructions. You know, when you read a recipe, it tells you all the ingredients you need, how long you need to bake something. You know, it gives you everything that you need to do. Well, with your instructions, you want to include that video that Amber said she didn't have time to watch. You want to include a video explaining your instructions. You want your instructions to be step by step. I know you're like, this is college. They should be able to figure it out. I promise you, if you have instructions that give step by step as to what you expect to do, you go over it in a video, you provide a rubric, okay, you provide student samples and resources, that recipe will allow them to be much more successful. And when they come to you with excuses, you've done your part and you can say, hey, go back and watch the video. They might complain, but they will, they will do it. 99% of the time, they will do it. So when you have your ducks in a row and you've done everything to show that I support you, I'm making sure you have everything that you need, then even though they give you those excuses, you refer them back to it. There's nothing else that you know they can say in that regard. Also, give the student customized feedback based on an assignment specific rubric. When you're able to tell the student exactly uh, what they did well and exactly how they need to improve, even those students with excuses have to respect you, okay? and they will respect you. They may not tell you that, but they will respect you. All throughout the course, when I was uh, grading her blogs, I had a rubric that I was going by and I would refer her back to it. For all of her written assignments, I had a rubric that I was going by and I would specify you know, the areas on the rubric where you know, she didn't do well and the areas where she did well. And I always made sure, you know, you've heard of the compliment sandwich, that you tell the student something good. You start off with something good. Then you give them the areas that need improvement, and then you close out with something good. So if you have an assignment-specific rubric that they basically can use as a checklist to make sure that they've done things well, you've done your part. And even if they don't, you know, abide by it or use it, that resource, the first assignment, if you stick to your guns and you continue to give that customized feedback, they'll say, oh, maybe I need to use this rubric, like she said, maybe I do need to watch this video because Amber's assignment started to get better after I said those things to her and she made those excuses. I could tell, yeah, you're watching these videos, you're making time. I wanna encourage you to be firm but fair. I cannot stand people who have this, well, I shouldn't say people. I can't stand the philosophy of everything is black and white because it's not. Every student comes to you with different capabilities, different experiences, and different, and like I said, Amber had been, not had good experiences in school. And so um, when I was an undergraduate at the Winston-Salem State University as a teacher education major, I remember them telling us that you are to be firm but fair. And so those, the kind of care that you give to one student that meets their needs, another student needs something else. It's just like if you're a parent of more than one child, you look at those people as individuals. Yes, you have your standards and your policies and your syllabus, but there are times when you need to look at this person has been through, you know, has just lost a parent or this person has, you know, multiple children and the pandemic may have been stressing them out and they tell you that and they may tell you that they're going to counseling and you know and you have to extend deadlines for those people i move deadlines all the time for students when they need it 
So whenever you're talking to a student with lots of excuses, acknowledge what they're saying. I'm sorry that you, you know, so busy that you don't have time to watch the videos. I understand how, you know, that can be. If they say I, I have a job and lots of children, you want to acknowledge where they are, but still um, make those modifications for them when necessary without going, you know, overboard. Be firm, but be fair. When you write your emails to them, again, this is addressing what I just said, be caring, but but have a professional tone so that they know, okay, this one isn't one to play with. She's working with me, but she's also serious about me getting my work done, about me learning, and about you know these policies that are in. She's flexible, but she's professional, okay? Also, you want to offer hope and encouragement whenever you're in contact with the student, okay? Treat people, I keep saying this, the way you wanna be treated. I look at each one of my students, I tell them, you have to keep the, the communication, the lines of communication open. I can't help you if you don't tell me what's going on. I can't help you if you don't ask for an extension. You know, I'm just gonna put the zero there. If you talk to me, um, then we can work things out. And so I'm always offering them hope. I actually have some weekly uh, student affirmations that go out the first six, week of, six weeks of school. And I have them on my instructor tab that are encouraging students and allow them to affirm good things about themselves. Um, because there are students that have had bad experiences, that college is a challenge for them, um, that, that, that learning online is challenging for them. So if you can offer hope, even with Amber, even during our live sessions, I would always um, say something positive to her. I remember she volunteered to be the group leader um, because my students have group roles and they maintain those for an entire month. And she volunteered to be the group leader one month and I couldn't believe it. And I kept telling her, I said, you did such a phenomenal job of being the group leader. I like the way you kept everyone on schedule, how you were very polite to people and encouraging. And so always offer hope because you don't know what's going on on the other side of the screen. So now as we close, I wanna tell you the outcome from uh, my experience with Amber. So Amber ended up getting a B in the course. Isn't that wonderful? She actually emailed me and said, I am so sorry for all the things, the emails that I've sent to you. I'm kind of angry. You were only trying to help me. She actually uh, went back and, and um, she resubmitted that first assignment and did it on time and her blogs got better and better. She would uh, present in class and her presentations got better. She got more thorough. And so, yes, she ended the course with a B. I was actually shocked when I was um, entering her grades and saw that she had earned a B um, because of all the tug and pull that we had gone through during the semester. And sometimes it was looking like um, her grades were not going to, to fare that way, but she did end up crossing that threshold into uh, a B. And so she was very proud of herself and very and very happy and sent me um, a really sweet email at the end of the semester. So when your students have excuses, it is so important for you to um, listen, have a listening ear, have all those things I share with you in place, be supportive and um, know that when you do the best for them, Typically, they will do their very best. They, they need somebody to believe in them sometimes. And when you show I'm firm, I'm fair, and all the other things that I we won't go over that again, that I share with you, um, you will see more often than not that students will rise up to the occasion and they will thank you um, in the end. So as we close, I want you to make sure that you head over to kellyaustin.com and enroll in the FACE method where you and I can spend a little bit more time together. Well, actually, it's not. You're going to be watching videos of me like you're doing now. But you can spend time and you can and ask me questions in the comment section and I can be supportive of you as you learn to master the art of teaching online. Don't don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with your colleagues who are teaching online. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.